Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. Today is August 8th, 8, 8, 2024. Great to be with you. Most mornings at this time, we get together to talk about strategies, tips, techniques, share success stories, support each of you. The primary focus of our morning discussions is building financial literacy. What, what does it take to have a fundable business, and what are some of the resources that are available through the grant we received? Today, we're going to look at it a little bit differently. So I'm sharing my screen, and on the left-hand side, we're talking about how we create legally and ethically, please note, legally and ethically, a fundable business. And I'm just going to give a cursory overview because today we're going to spend more time on the right-hand side, but we talk about how legally and ethically we create a fundable business on paper so the business is eligible for funding. And we do that over a four-week process. I think many of you are familiar with it. If you're not, you can go to fourweekfunding.com. So on the left-hand side, it's about creating a fundable business. Now, frequently I get questions about, well, what do we do about the business owner? What if the business owner is not credible on paper? Because on the left-hand side, we've got it figured out. I mean, this is exactly what it takes to have a fundable business to be able to get business funding. It's, it's really the three C's, if you will. Credit, talking about business credit, collateral, and capacity. But what do we do about the business owner if the business owner has had some issues whereby just being direct, they don't look credible on paper. What are we gonna do about the business owner? Well, what we do know is that there are many different sources of business funding and not all of them look at the credibility of the owner, so that's a fact. But conversely is true also. Some sources of business funding do look at the credibility of the business owner, therefore we wanted to roll out today, uh, August 8th, a resource to help the business owners. So let me make this larger for the whole screen. We'll make it a little bit bigger and we'll go through. So our topic today is not, it's not pivoting away from our focus of creating fundable businesses. This is still, this is just an adjunct to that, that what are we going to do if we create a fundable business, but the business owner doesn't look credible on paper. So in other words, the credit profile of the business owner is weak. So what are we going to do? We're either going to avoid sources of business funding that considers business or that, that considers personal credit. That's option one. Or option two is we need to have some resources available to help the business owner look more credible on paper. But again, it must be done in a legal and ethical manner. So today we're rolling out the 30-day credit sweep, and we're going to introduce it today and then, of course, answer any questions that you have. And you can put your questions into the Q&A, the question and answer box. It's like a chat box of Zoom. Many of you are involved with credit repair, and that's great. This is not designed to compete with any of you that are taking care of improving the personal credit of your clients. If you're providing that service, we do not want to get in the way of that. And this is not credit repair. In fact, we went through an FTC audit where they challenged. They said, no, this is credit repair. We said, no, it's not. And we, we won. So literally, this is not credit repair. We are not competing against credit repair services. The problem often with credit repair is often it doesn't work. So again, if you do credit repair, I'm sure you're the best at it and I'm sure it works every time. So I'm not stabbing at any of you, please don't take it that way. But in general, credit repair doesn't work. It's the whole dispute, dispute, dispute approach. And worse yet, you get some sort of system where they want you to do all the work and you're paying them, which makes no sense. So our approach is different. We have attorneys and paralegals doing this in a legal manner. So let's go ahead and describe it. The 30-day credit suite provides a legal, effective, guaranteed, and no-cost way to address applicable 
derogatory items instead of disputing them. So it's not a dispute mill concept. Our network of attorneys and paralegals will prepare the documents necessary to block applicable negative items from your credit report using a fully compliant legal process. Now, I, I can tell you there's no better way to confirm that what someone does is legal is than to go through an FTC audit. We interfaced with the FTC attorneys. They're not the friendliest, but they're very professional. And literally, this process was deemed legal, appropriate, and compliant. And again, it is not, oops, didn't mean to do that. It is not a credit repair program. Does it repair credit? I, I guess you could say that. That would be an easy way to describe it. But it is not credit repair. We went to the bat. When we first were contacted by the FTC regarding this, this dispute, is it credit repair or not? We said it's not. They said it was. We went and looked for legal representation. And, and I, I'm not exaggerating a bit. The first law firm that we went to to say, hey, we need some help representing ourselves that we're not doing credit repair against the FTC, the retainer that they wanted was $1 million to represent us. We decided we're going to go it alone. We did it and we won. So this, this is 100% legally compliant and it is not credit repair. So what's the premise then? Are we using legal loopholes, if you will, to have negative items blocked off of credit repair? We are. We are. And so, in fact, if credit bureaus don't comply with our documentation, which we take care of sending, you don't have to go send letters out. No one wants to do that. We, you would even have legal grounds to sue and collect money from them. And I can tell you that Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion do not want to go to court to defend when they have violated your rights. So our approach, no risk and absolutely FTC compliant, absolutely FTC compliant. So yes, we have a written contract. Yes, we have a written guarantee. So again, why are we doing this? Because we want to be in the credit space? No, we don't want to be in the credit space. We're focused on building fundable businesses legally and ethically. But what happens? Sometimes the business owner doesn't look credible on paper. And we're not passing any judgment, but it's, it's perception that matters, right? On the business side, we can build a business plan and business credit profiles, put collateral on, and, and make that business look good. Some lenders don't care about the credibility of the business owner, but some do. And we were asked, let's make sure that we have a resource to address the credibility of the business owners when that comes into play. So we, as it says, no cost through 501c3 nonprofit. So we will reimburse, I didn't try to cross it out. We will reimburse you for the cost of the 30-day credit suite while helping you benefit. So can someone just come in and, and use the credit suite program off the street? I guess they could, but that's not the focus. That's not the focus. The focus is helping our participants in the four-week funding program have the greatest options for funding. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's scroll on down. What can be addressed? Well, in general, anything that's derogatory on, on the credit profile, everything from inquiries. We have a client, his name's Josh. Josh is an interesting gentleman. Gentlemen, he he had over a hundred, over a hundred inquiries on his credit report. That's very rare. And we got it all the way down to three, which is what we need to go to funding. So from over a hundred inquiries down to three. But inquiries can come off, collections, charge-offs, bankruptcies, other derogatory items. Bankruptcies are really nice because you think, well, if I went through a bankruptcy, does it really matter, right? Because it wipes all of my debts off. Well, just the fact that the bankruptcy remains on the credit profile makes you appear more risky. So any of those derogatories can be addressed. 
It's not credit repair, but we are leveraging legal strategies that are enabled under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. The, the key is, is we can attest that the, the derogatory or negative items that's being reported damages our financial livelihood. And there's some protections under the FCRA rather it be true or not. So we're not going in and disputing, saying not mine, not mine, not mine. As we all know, that rarely works because there's someone on the other side of the transaction saying, oh yeah, that is his or hers. But if it in fact damages your financial livelihood, then there's protections under the FCRA that those derogatory items can be blocked. So the verb is block. Some people get caught up in that. Block means it doesn't report, so it's what you want. Then when you look at your credit repair, or credit report, when you look at your credit report, then the derogatory items don't show anymore. Success stories. We've actually been doing this in the background for several years, and this is, in fact, our very first client. So our first client enrolled January 21st of 2021, so that was, what, about three and a half years ago. We've had many since then, of course. Baseline TransUnion was 524, Experian 528, Equifax 518. So these are pretty common scores you see for someone who has had a, a, a challenge in life. Their, their personal credit isn't where it needs to be. So now I know we say 30 days, but uh, here we're actually at 33 days when we pulled the next report. I think it was because of a weekend. But regardless, TransUnion went from 524 to a 748. Pretty nice increase. What a 224 point increase on TransUnion. Experian also went to 748. Not all the scores will always be the same, but uh, that is from 528 to 748. So that is a 240 point increase. Equifax didn't uh, perform quite as well, only went to a 734, but you can see 734 is vastly different. We can't promise specific credit scores. We, we didn't before, and the FTC will not allow us to make promises. Oh, enroll and you'll get a 748 credit score. Can't do that. That's not FTC compliant. But we can make other guarantees, but we cannot guarantee a specific score, just so you know. And then, of course, credit is one of those things. It, people really don't care about credit. They care about what they can do with their credit. And so that's all we're trying to bring out here with the flyer. And we can get you an editable version of this flyer for yourself as well if you want. But most people want better credit for the utility of credit. Maybe they want to buy a home or they want to buy a car. They want to reduce their cost of financing. Or, or maybe, of course, as it relates to what you and I do, uh, maybe they want money to start or grow a business. And then uh, with this flyer, if you want a copy of it, you'll be able to edit the bottom and direct them back to you. So let me make this a bit smaller. So again, for any of you that came in late, uh, this was a bad day to come in late because you're missing the framing of this topic. Our focus is not about personal credit. Our focus is building financial literacy and building fundable businesses. We received a grant to do that, four-week funding, great program. What we started our conversation with is that while some lenders do not care about the credibility, or, or more specifically, the credit of the business owner or owners, some do. So we had a number of you come to us and say, why don't we help the business owner become more credible on paper, legally and ethically as well. Uh, after several of you requested that, we decided, all right, then that's fine. Then, then we'll adopt this as an adjunct resource. So with that being said, uh, let's go through questions, comments, concerns. Uh, Jeff asked, are the derogatory items on the credit permanently removed? Or do they reappear? I've never seen them reappear. So they're they're blocked is the verb permanently. I, I've never seen them reappear. I, I guess theoretically they could, but it, it is a matter of practical implementation. No, that the, they will come off and they'll stay off. But again, 
Any of you that are involved with credit repair, we are not in your space. You take care of, of credit for your clients. You do it your way. You make the, the money that you're charging. That's fine. Uh, we, we, we won't get in your way at all. But if you're not involved in credit space and you have clients that would like the, the full breadth of options by going through the four-week funding program for the business side, we can help them legally and ethically look better on paper from a personal perspective as well. All right, who else has, has questions? All right, Harold brings up a good point. So his point is essentially, what else do we do to help the business owner look more credible? So that, that's a great question, Harold. So in addition to this, one of the things that we commonly do is we help business owners become more fundable if they're currently self-employed. And, and I had a, a client yesterday he wanted a first tranche, a first round of funding at the beginning of the process, but his documentation of his income showed him as 1099. No one should be 1099. No one should be self-employed. That's a horrible decision. Instead, take that 1099 income, drive it into your business, and then pay yourself out of your business as a W-2 employee. You can go to like QuickBooks Payroll or a, another payroll service, set yourself up on direct deposit. Now you're a W-2 employee, but of your own company. But see, no one asks that. They'll ask the borrower, are you self-employed? And they hate that, right? Self-employed increases the risk and, and the cost of capital. We don't want to ever be self-employed. But people think, well, I'm 1099. I have to be self-employed. That's ludicrous. No, run that 1099 business uh, income into your business and then pull money out as a W-2 employee. Normally, that's going to lower your taxes. It's going to lower your risk of audit, and it's going to make you much more fundable. So I think that's what Harold was getting at, is that there's other strategies that we're already incorporating. We just hadn't specifically highlighted the credit because one of the main reasons is so many of you are involved in credit repair, and we just we don't want to be competing with you. So be clear, if you bring someone in to four-week funding and you're, you're helping them with their credit, we will steer away from it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to get in your way. We're not going to take money out of your pocket. But for some of you, you're not involved in the credit space. And if clients want the broadest access to funding options, then we would not only want to have a fundable business, but we'd want to have a fundable business owner. Hopefully that makes sense, but we are not here to compete with you. All right, so uh, Gilbert's asking about commissions. So our affiliates do not rep the credit suite because it's a little bit more complicated, but our branch offices do. So like we have Phyllis on and, and Phyllis is one of our branch offices. So if you want to be a branch office, this is one of the resources that you would have an arrow in your quiver. And as a branch office, you actually make $1,000 each time you have someone go into the credit suite, which is great. But if you're an affiliate, don't worry about it. We're not going to bog you down. You just need to know that we have a breadth of resources to help create fundable businesses and fundable business owners. If you want to be a branch office, then you get this. It's white labeled. You go out under your branding, under your label. You even control the pricing. But uh, hopefully that answered your question. Um, Greg asked a good question about when we have high utilization. So that's a great point. So what are some things that can cause a business owner's credit to look bad? Well, it certainly could be excessive inquiries could be collection accounts, charge-off accounts, bankruptcies. But when we get down to other, what he's asking about is what about when the utilization is high? So when utilization is high, what we typically will do is we'll move the revolving debt and move it to a term loan. 
And by doing that, the credit score will typically shoot up 100 or more points. So no, the credit suite doesn't make revolving credit go away. But one of the strategies that we use is moving revolving debt out of revolving into installment. So within that same 30-day window, we have the client down to 0% or near 0% utilization. And that will also contribute to a massive credit score increase, make the client look less distressed, and make them much more fundable. So very good point, Greg. So is there a strategy for high utilization? Absolutely. Is it effective? 100% of the time. Uh, but is it part of the sweep itself? No, not directly. It's, it's an adjunct. It's just normally, in the past, we hadn't really been focusing on personal credit because so many of you help your clients with that. And again, we're not going to get in your way. We're not going to compete with you. We're not going to take money out of your pocket. So what happens is when a client comes in to the four-week funding program, we'll, we'll do a soft pull, we'll assess their credit, and we'll just ask, what are you currently doing? And if they say, well, I'm working with Anthony, and he's taking care of my credit issues, then we're going to zip it up and move on, because we're not going to compete with you or Anthony or anyone else. But if they say, well, nothing, then of course, then we could introduce this. If you're one of our branches like Phyllis, then we would refer them back to you, the branch office, so you can make your $1,000 by helping them with the free credit sweep. If you're not a branch, then we would go ahead and, and see if they want the resource. But again, not all sources of business funding care about personal credit. Some do, but some don't. So if they don't care that they look uncredible on paper, then we can just focus on the sources of funding that do not use personal credit. So people are not being required to do this. They're not being pushed into it. But again, the way we have the process set up, uh, it's at ultimately no cost to them. All right, so does anyone else have questions of how this fits into the four-week funding? Four-week funding is our primary focus. Now, I know those of you that are affiliates, you're driving people in through the free funding proposal landing pages, and that works great. So they come in and we see what they qualify for initially. And that can be their first tranche. If they don't have a fundable business, then we can recommend the four-week funding program to provide the resources so in a month's time they have a fundable business. So that, that's our focus. I just wanted you to understand this resource. And then Phyllis and those of you who are branch offices, this will be a really nice arrow in your quiver, a nice, nice income stream. If you're an affiliate, don't worry about it. If you're an affiliate that wants to become a branch office, then of course, let us know. All right, so let me pause the sharing for a second. And then who else has questions, comments, concerns that we can address today? And I'll pop the sharing back up. So again, you know, our, our focus is creating fundable businesses. That's the grant we receive. We do that over a four-week process. The topic just came up, what can we do to improve the credibility of the business owner if they want that? And, and here is the service. If you need to reach us, of course, the About Us information is here on our website, Four Week Funding. Or you can email us. Questions, comments, concerns. Hopefully you understand the big picture why we're having this discussion. Does personal credit matter for business funding? It depends. Some lenders look at personal credit heavily. Some of them don't look at it at all. Some of them have some partial consideration. We can legally and ethically, without using credit repair, help people improve their credit through this process. It's, it's an advanced strategy. It's a legal strategy and it, it works well. Uh, Claude, uh, that question I don't really understand there, so I'll leave that out. And then yeah, anyone that wants to reach out to us individually, you're welcome to. You know our main number, 903-200-8781. You can email us as well, but we're happy to, uh, to assist anyone with any other questions. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning.
Thanks, everyone. See you then. Bye-bye.